Okay, welcome to the show. My name is Paul Burgess, and I'm here today with Dr. Tanisha Ward, who is the founder of Infinity Wellness Center in Austin, Texas. And she specializes in finding and correcting the core root cause of conditions like fatigue, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, and uh, just about anything that you can think of. Um, and it's a to me, it's interesting because obviously part of my business, well, not part, a big part of my business is exactly that. And it's always interesting to talk to other prolific um, practitioners around the world about how they do it and, and, and what their viewpoint is. So, Dr. Wards, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to dive into this. Pleasure is all mine because you're going to be doing most of the talking and I'm just going to sit back. <laughs> that oh. sounds good for me. <laughs> so, Firstly, tell us about you, because you've had a bit of a checkered past when it comes to your own challenges with illness and so on. So give us the give us the lowdown. Yes. So I've had two different challenges in my life where, quite frankly, I just feel like Western medicine failed me in them. Um, the first was when I was just 15 years old. I literally woke up one day unable to move most of my joints, fatigue, brain fog, um, the pain was excruciating. The best way I could describe it was the joint pain. It felt like glass shards scraping from the inside out of my joints. I had a rash from my waist down and no one could figure out what was wrong. We went to my regular doctor. We went to multiple doctors. I had every diagnosis in the book and then they proved most of those to be wrong. <laughs> they thought I had lupus. It wasn't lupus. They thought it was MS. It wasn't MS. Eventually I got diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome right? Who, who, who's gone through this path, hasn't heard that one. And then, um, juvenile arthritis, idiopathic, meaning they don't know what causes it, juvenile arthritis. And from our own research, my mom found out it was possibly Lyme disease and found a holistic minded doctor, um, because I, it was 1994 in Michigan and they weren't really talking about doing much with Lyme disease at the time. And, it was really over over only in the East Coast, which was like New York, Connecticut area in, in the States. And basically there wasn't a whole lot of doctors that even A, acknowledged it, knew what to do with it and thought it was real. So we finally found the right doctor and through a whole year of treatment, and, and at this point I'd been sick about a year, I got my life back. I was able to go back to school. I was able to continue on with the rest of my life. Um, but it was debil debilitating for a long time. The second time is after I had my daughter, I thought that Lyme disease had come back because I started having a lot of the same symptoms and I found out it was autoimmunity and Epstein-Barr virus. That I figured out on my own, fortunately, had been in practice a you know, good couple years at that point um, and was able to essentially help myself, treat myself. And, and that's the process and program we take people through now. And the thing is, <clears throat> it's very difficult to know exactly what is causing fatigue because there yes. are so many different potential causes of it right can't sleep then you can sleep and then you're really tired and then you've got brain fog and joint ache and things like that and sometimes it's just a dairy intolerance and other times it's something far more serious and then you know it's so difficult to differentiate that stuff and that's why obviously when we're doing a bit of a dig into people's history and symptoms and really maybe some testing we can hopefully differentiate what's going on but from your perspective yes. how did you realize it was um, an autoimmune and then uh, glandular fever, Epstein-Barr, rather than the Lyme? What did you do to differentiate that? You know, that's a really good question. No one's actually asked me that before. It was testing. It was the right testing. Yeah. I also believe, and, and we, I would say we're chronic fatigue specialists. That's what we focus on most. And I can, I can put it into three possible buckets or three possible causes. Um, we call it an internal attack, which is autoimmunity, an external attack, which could be anything from an underlying infection to a food allergy, to a toxin. We see a lot of mold toxicity and heavy metals um, to stress. So internal attack, external attack, and then stress or psychology or adrenal fatigue, we call it, you know, just stress has been weighing on your system for so long. It's either disrupting your endocrine system and or your brain chemistry, because we're only meant to go into fight or flight for minutes, right? Not days, weeks, months, pandemic, two years. We're in fight or flight, right? Your adrenal glands, your brain chemistry, things get off balance, trying to keep you upright, trying to keep homeostasis, trying to keep everything working in working order, right? And something's going to give and something's going to crash. So I already knew in practice, it was one of those three things. 
I thought it was a line because that happens often. People um, that have had it a decade ago or longer, it can flare back up in times of stress. And I think having a child, and it was a stressful time in my practice, was enough to flare it up, but it felt different. And 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 if you haven't gone through this, you you may not know exactly what I mean. Um, Lyme has a feeling. It has a feeling of, and, and a lot of people that have Lyme disease say, it's, I feel limey, which is just a term that they've come up with. It's a, it's a very deep joint ache. I can't get to it. It hurts, but I can't pinpoint where it's coming from kind of pain with fatigue, with brain fog, with the neurological issues. And I wasn't having pain. I was only tired and had a lot of brain fog and got to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. So I also ran some tests and saw that I didn't feel like the line was, was flared up. So I just started digging. I'm like, okay, this is, this is different, similar, but different. And that's when I just started honing in on the right test that I would have run a patient through, honestly. Yeah. Um, and the big issue or the big difference is one is viral and one is bacterial, right? And there's two very different um, things that are going on. Correct. So it's, yes. It's always obviously important to know which one it is. Which testing did you use to set up curiosity? So in Lyme disease, there's a, a test. Now, let me back up. We don't know if once you have Lyme disease, will you always have it? Because even though it is a bacteria, it kind of acts like a virus. And sometimes these bugs go dormant. They're stealth pathogens and they could hide. Mm -hmm. But if you're having symptoms and they, they're kind of creeped back up, we run something called a CD57 test. It's not a Lyme disease test. It's a protein test. And if it's low, we look at it as, okay, you know, the, the Lyme could be active if it's too low. And mine was normal. So then I started running some other tests. I ran a full gamut of blood work and I ran an antibody test for Epstein-Barr virus. And sure enough, I had an active infection. And then Hashimoto's is a thyroid um, autoimmune disorder where your body thinks your thyroid is public enemy number one. <laughs> so it's attacking it. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Your, your body's attacking inflammation. The question is why is there inflammation in the thyroid? And that's what I had to figure out also. Um, but that was an antibody test as well. An Epstein-Barr virus antibody tests and a Hashimoto's antibody test. So I had the antibodies, just like, you know, we're talking about COVID antibodies in the world right now. So I had antibodies that said, my body has recognized my own tissue as an intruder and it's fighting it. So that's, that's what we had to stop. Okay. And so we see an awful lot of patients that have these symptoms that are very global, right? Fatigue, like we said, yeah, um, they can't get out of bed sometimes. I think if someone can't get out of bed, we know it's quite progressed, you know, it's progressed a fair way, but fatigue, brain fog, you know, just feeling really like uninfused with life, that kind of thing is quite general nowadays. A lot of people have got this stuff and, and they walk around thinking that's just life, just the way it is. Um, and they put on weight and, you know, have all of those, that lovely modern day kind of shape about them. And um, very often they'll go to a doctor because they just know they're not feeling right. Mm -hmm. And they go, no problem, we'll do a load of blood tests. And they run the bloods. And then you ring back in a week's time and the GP says, yeah, everything's fine. Yep. Right, no problem. And then, so they ask, well, why do I feel like this? And they're saying, hmm, yeah, we're not, we're not overly sure, but there's nothing wrong with your blood. So there can't be anything wrong with you. You know, it's all in your head kind of stuff. Yes. Um, and I'll shorten that sequence because I'm sure there'd be other testing that would be done in some cases. Yes. But you must come across people like that all the time, right? By the time somebody comes to our clinic, and, and we do telehealth, so sometimes it's digital, they've probably seen four to five doctors, sometimes on the upside of eight or 10. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. They've got the stack of labs, and they say everything looks normal. And, and the problem, the biggest problem is the labs aren't very thorough. They're running very, very basic labs. Are you dying or not kind of thing. Yeah. And specifically for the thyroid, oftentimes they only run the TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. That actually comes from the pituitary gland, not the thyroid. The pituitary gland sends the thyroid stimulating hormone to stimulate the thyroid to make T3 and T4. But if, if, if that's fine, okay, well, the pituitary may be functioning but maybe the thyroid's not and they miss it. They just aren't running, I feel like deep enough labs or something's barely out of range and their doctors are like, ah, oh, <laughs> you're, you're close to normal. Give it six more months. It will be out of range. So why would they not address that? But they're like, ah, oh, you're close to range. It's not that bad. I, there's nothing we can do kind of thing. And we see that sadly all the time. When it comes to thyroid, I mean, TSH is, is 
pointless pretty much because it doesn't tell you anything about t4 anything about conversion to t3 anything yeah. about any of the other fancy words like reverse t3 and all that kind of jazz right but it, what i find especially i have a lot of patients in the us okay and i have them all around the world and um certainly in the us the blood panels are basic when they're oh, initially yes. done because there's a cost obviously right. and then you and then the range that's used is very wide and so most Agreed. people will fall into that range right and right i'm sure in your clinic same as ours we use an optimal range which is much narrower and we can see a lot of things going on but i find um one of the challenges we have with regular doctors trying the best they can is that the interpretation of test results whether it be bloods or viral bacteria or whatever it is the interpretation is where it's lacking they fail to see either patterns that are going on and they only look at a marker and treat the marker they don't look at how does that affect with other things um, or they're just not really it's not their thing and therefore they're kind of like yeah it looks fine um yeah, yeah uh, Prozac is, yes. is, is the way forward kind of thing. And 100%. So, yeah, so again, you know, the patient will continue to say, look, they don't feel well. They'll say, well, nothing really wrong with you. Then they come to you, as you said, they've been to all these doctors, got all these labs. What What's then your approach? Yeah, so you, you use the term optimal range. We call it functional range, yeah, same thing. Range, yeah. The lab gives us a range from here to here. We're looking at a much smaller, tighter range. And we're looking for patterns, right? So this could mean something else. And we put it, we take a step back and put it all together. And again, the question is why? Okay, so your thyroid is out of balance or it's attacking itself. Why? Is there an infection? Is there a vi you know, vi an underlying virus? Is there a toxin in the body? Is it a food allergy? They don't even get to that point. And you're right. If something's a low normal or a high normal, we'll address that because we want you functioning at your most optimal. So that optimal range is much tighter. So once we figure that out, what's going on and why, and again, it, it, we spend an hour with our, our new patients and, and probably like you do, we do a very detailed timeline history. We get all of their symptoms rated. And so we're also looking for patterns and things to line up in the history and the symptoms. Then we look at the labs and the second visit, we take a step back and say, okay, your starting point may be gut repair. Your starting point may be liver detox. Your starting point might be an antiviral. And I would say a lot of people start with gut repair because that's a whole nother podcast. We could talk about leaky yeah, gut, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Because if their thyroid is low and their adrenals are out of balance and we give them the right supplements and the right herbs and we change the foods, but their stomach can't absorb those things, it's a waste of time and money, right? So we have to make sure and here they call it the sad diet, the standard American diet, right? 90% of people that walk in the door are on the sad diet. And so their gut's not functioning. They're not having bowel movements for two or three days, or they're having multiple and gas and bloating. They're just not absorbing their food. So they're sure the heck not going to absorb supplements, nutrients, hormones that we give. So we have to take a step back oftentimes. And I say, build you back up from ground zero kind of thing in the foundational healing of gut health. Yeah. That's oftentimes our process, but then it's individualized because everybody might go a different route you know, at that point. Another thing you mentioned, which I think is worth noting is the weight gain, right? When things aren't functioning, a lot of times that's inflammation. Yep. You know, it, a lot of times it's adipose and fat tissue, right? For sure. But a lot of times it's inflammation. So we'll do things like through gut repair, people go off inflammatory foods, including gluten. And they, they're like, I, lo I lost 10 pounds in two weeks. That's not fat tissue, right? That's pure inflammation in the body. Their, their face, everything looks different. And, and all of that just inflammation, I think, really is the root of all disease. Whatever is it, organ is inflamed, whatever area is inflamed, it's not functioning properly. So that's a big one, getting, getting the body, getting inflammation under control in the body for sure, and, and getting you absorbing. So um, I agree, inflammation obviously holds a lot of water, and then that comes off and you see this really big change in the scales. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the root cause of a lot of problems. It's what was causing that in the first place, like you said. Right. I think right. what I find a great deal with foods, especially with people who have been dieting, yo-yoing a, a lot kind of thing, those are getting away from obviously the viral bacterial stuff, is that the, the, the real cause of the problem for them um, isn't the food they're eating, it's their belief behind those 
foods. Oh, interesting. So, so, so they're sitting there going, well, surely it's okay for me to have oats and blueberries and honey in the morning. What's wrong with that? That's healthy. And you go, yeah, but really it's not working for you. And so some right. of the beliefs, obviously, once they're changed, we change their behaviours. And then the behaviour changes that outcome, which is yes. better adherence to certain foods, less inflammatory foods going in. You know, what's wrong with wholemeal bread, especially if I have the seeded version? Yes. Like, well, that's not working for you. And so you have to kind of unravel some of that stuff because those right. beliefs have been so indoctrinated by very powerful marketing. Like, you know, <laughs> well, yes. Every, everywhere you move, it's like, well, that's the greatest thing for you. And if you really believe marketing, you know, we'd all yeah. be drinking Budweiser and being very healthy. And right. It ain't so. so right. But that on top of doing the, the, the testing and so on for your other um, biological issues, I think is quite a powerful approach. And when they actually, like you say, sit down and go, right, okay, we know what the issue is. We let's get it fixed. Mm -hmm. And then you say, well, actually, this is going to take you quite a long time. That's the next stumbling block. Would you say? Yes. All healing takes time. I tell people it's a minimum of 60 to 90 days for your cells to turn over. So you don't have all the same cells in your body that you had three months ago, but it's not going to be in 10 days kind of thing for sure. Definitely. Uh, another thing you mentioned, you know, might not be the right food for you is we actually do some genetic testing in the office now. And we have found a huge problem in histamine foods, foods that are high in histamine. So here's a great example. We had a patient who was fatigued, brain fog. The, the big thing that kind of tipped me off to look at her histamine genetics or her food and inflammatory genetics in, in, as a whole was she would have hives every morning and like mid morning into the afternoon. And we got her test results back and we found out she had an intolerance to foods that produce high histamine. Now, some of those foods are healthy. Spinach is high histamine, avocado is high histamine and strawberries. Guess what was in her smoothie every single morning? <laughs> it's a green smoothie, right? It should yeah. be healthy. And we literally took her off those foods, gave her a little bit of quercetin, which is an anti-inflammatory, natural anti-inflammatory to help lower the inflammation in her body from the histamine. It all went away. Yeah. One test, one genetic test one change, you know, she didn't have to go through this whole process in our program. We found it in, it was just this one thing. Now there's other foods also fermented foods have high histamine. So things like sauerkraut, which we're, we know is really good for gut healing, but maybe not for you. So that's, I think that's the big miss with a lot of doctors. It's so cookie cutter that it, they've, they've, mm. they've lost the individualized <clears throat> medicine and people are getting shuffled through like cattle, you know, and like a number and it's, and it's sad because we have access to run genetics to look at this stuff. I think everybody should have that done. There's nothing more personalized than what, what, what are your genes? Cause they're never going to change. What do they say? It Well, at least not in my lifetime. Maybe, maybe I'm getting old. Maybe we'll make that breakthrough in science where we can change our genetics. But right now <laughs> they're never going to change. If this is the card, you know, the hand of cards you've been dealt let's figure out how to make that work. So we're doing things like protein in the morning, like eggs for her, which she was, she was good with and she's fine. Yeah. Like it's and, and, totally different. And with genetics, you only need, ever need to do the test once. You don't Correct. Ever retest it, right? It's just one off payment. You do it once, it's for life. Unlike And they used to be thousands. When I first got into this, I've been in practice 16 years. So probably nine or 10 years ago, genetics started hitting, coming out pretty, you know, big into the functional medicine circuit, they were $2,000 for one, yeah. two genes, the M MTHFR genes. Now that's $200. So it's really become affordable. And you're right, you only have to run it once. Yeah. And, and that's what's great about it, because it can give you some very um, good insight into how you can run just like your daily life when it comes to just some regular practices like the food, or maybe yeah. the type of exercise, or maybe the you know, be aware of vitamin D might be something for you to supplement. No, you're not going to get it from sun so much. Yes. All that, kind yeah. of, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you need some extra B vitamins because your MTHFR is a bit lower. That kind of thing. Correct. So it, it's it's definitely a useful piece of the puzzle. <clears throat> and like you said, in some circumstances, it can be the answer um, to, mm -hmm. to issues. Um, what do you find um, when people come and you do tests with things like you said, mold, environmental toxicities, 
um, heavy metals, that kind of thing. Or do you see a lot of patients presenting with, with those issues that they were not aware of? More than I ever thought. Yeah. Here in Central Texas, I would not have thought mold was a big epidemic or a problem until the last five or six years where I'm seeing it all the time. I would have thought, oh, Florida, where it's really, really humid, or Seattle, where it rains all the time, people have mold toxicity. It, it's really, it doesn't matter because it can be in your house and in your environment. So we're seeing that more and more. Um, I have some crazy stories about heavy metal toxicity that are mind blowing. People have been sent home to die. They're, they've been told your organs are shutting down. You're not, you know, you're not going to make it a year. We don't know what's wrong with you. Um, one patient had a, you know, ALS diagnosis and they said everything, eventually your heart's going to shut off. We found this person was a um, painter and they were exposed to lead. Yeah. We did a heavy metal toxicity test and they had lead all through their body and they did some chelation where they pull the lead out and they lived. In mm -hmm. fact, that was the grandfather of the, another doctor that works in our practice, but we've seen it. I, I saw somebody who worked in the um, auto industry. He worked in a factory making automobiles and he started, same thing, organs started shutting down. He was blind in one eye, just they thought for sure, just go home and die. They were basically told, we don't know what's wrong with you. He's going to be blind soon. We can't find anything wrong. He's, he, I don't even think they gave him a diagnosis. I just think they said, we don't know what to do. And it was a heavy metal toxicity, multiple. He had mercury and all kinds of different metals. And we talked about it and he's like, oh yeah, I've worked there for 40 years. 30 years ago, we were in tiny rooms with no ventilation and who knows what chemicals we were dealing with. It was stuff we probably should have been wearing gloves and a ventilator and we weren't yep. right. So we don't know, we don't know, but that all of those, another one I could go on and on, um, grew up on a farm and she was also a hairdresser and she started having these neurological issues, seizure activity, pain. Of course she got diagnosed with fibromyalgia. What, what kind of threw me off though, is she had tried many, many, many seizure medications and none of them stopped her seizures. So I'm like, okay, this isn't a typical epilepsy case. Something's affecting the nervous system. And sure enough, we found all the different chemicals you find in Roundup. And we had the conversation and she's like, oh yeah, they would spray the crops and we would run out as kids and dance in it mm, <laughs> when the yeah. planes came by. And we're like, yeah. So that combined <laughs> with genetics, if somebody's a poor detoxer, that stuff can still be in your body decades and decades later, if you yeah. can't detox it properly. So that's another reason why genetics can be so important is to find out, you know, why are two people living in a house that has a toxic mold level and one person is fine. The other is bedridden with fatigue and joint pain and brain fog. That's where it gets down to personalized medicine of, well, this person's detox pathways don't have genetic defects in them and they can get rid of that mold on a daily and they're fine. This person has multiple defects in their genetic pathways for, for detoxing and they can't. Yeah. So and, it's and, all very interesting. Yeah, it, it, and, and it's fine if it's just one mold and there's a, a, a certain level of it and, and it can be detoxed. But if you've got mold and several other chemical toxicities and, and, and you know, other yes. things combined, then the whole thing becomes quite difficult to, to shift, even if you've got great genetics for detoxification because well, the that's load true is too. just too big, right? I, I, yeah. I took a picture the other day. I was in a supermarket and they had Roundup, um, which if you, if no one, if people listening don't know, is a weed killer um, yes. produced by a company that has uh, something called glyphosate in it, yep. and um, which has been known to cause cancer. And it says on the, on the top, on the bottle now that it comes in, no glyphosate. And so hmm. they've taken it out. That's great because that is one of the tests we run in urine is glyphosate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we and find it all the time. But but the, the, the thing is, if it wasn't bad for you, why take it out? Right. Right. They've clearly found it is. I mean, they had huge amounts of um, lawsuits and ended up uh -huh. getting, having to pay billions of dollars uh, if people have got cancer and stuff. But that is prevalent everywhere. So a very quick story on this one. Um, yeah. Patient of mine in Florida we did a mold and toxicity test on him and he came up with a lot of stuff, treated him over six months, everything came down, you know, numbers going from 640 to like 2.1, like completely Good. Wow. Yeah. removed everything, right? Glyphosate went up. Mm, now right. his body could handle it. It was in his cells. Well, it 
what was happening was he was getting re-exposure to it all the time because he was eating foods that were not organic and they were sprayed and they was eating a fair bit of it. And he was just picking that stuff up, you know, every day, which is more and more of it was coming in. So the rest of it was all just getting removed and yet the glyphosate was increasing. And so as soon as we changed that, obviously we got rid of it again, but it's so yeah. easy. It's so easy to almost reinfect yourself at the want of a better expression. Well, that's true. Careful. Because life, right? Like we're all living in this toxic world that we have created, by the way, that we can't hardly exist in anymore. I mean, you're going to get toxins just sitting on the highway here. You know, you're going to car exhaust, et cetera. Like it's hard to totally avoid, even if you're living the cleanest, greenest life, which is why I'm a big fan of doing a detox once or twice a year, because we're all, we've all got these chemicals. Like we can't yeah. live in a bubble completely. We can try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and I agree. You, you do need to be very conscientious about what exposure you get, you know, don't microwave things in plastic containers or, right. or use a microwave at all. You know, don't necessarily, don't drink tap water. Don't, you know, don't, don't go jogging down a main road. I mean, I see it all the time. You think, what are you doing? Cause you're jogging yeah. right next to the traffic. Yeah. And you're breathing breath. heavy. Yeah. Like, that's really? a good point. Come on. And what are you doing? So, but yeah. Um, the, 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 the whole process of detoxifying, on a regular basis or at least trying to bind up some of that stuff i think is massively important important one of the yes. biggest um it, in, you come back to mold you were saying in texas dry very dry uh, most of the year round and all that kind of stuff one of the big mold exposure a lot of people don't realize is their car yes because that that um ac the air conditioning if it's not working quite right or there's a lot of condensation and then it cools down then it warms up and cools down again and it just sits there um and you turn it on, it will just gets blown straight, straight out. You don't see it, obviously. Sometimes people go, oh, that smells a bit funny. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes that can really be um, a big, uh, uh, a big problem. And and especially if you've ever had a leak or spilt something in your car and it's not really dried properly. Yes. You know, sunroofs leak a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. You left your windows open. And you know where this became a really big problem. And I have a slew of patients from um, Houston because they've had many, many hurricanes. And so oftentimes cars get flooded and they, they dry them out or whatever. Right. But they don't go get it properly probably cleaned yeah. and so in the bigger problem is in Houston we're about three hours from Houston but I have a lot of patients from Houston is and this is becoming an epidemic in Austin too is sitting in traffic for an hour plus mm. right how busy traffic is so so now they're sitting in this for two hours a day breathing it in and Houston has you know certain levels of pollution in the air. So oftentimes they don't want to roll down their windows <laughs> to get fresh air. So they're sitting in it yeah. and you're absolutely right. That's something that we don't even really think about. So I've had, I've had a couple of patients, we've tested their house. We found a little bit of mold, you know, but there's high, high levels. So we've tested their cars because it's an easy, it's easy to test these environments. You just get these little peach tree dishes, or you can get the Ermi test, which is a, a swifter, like it's not a hard, hard thing to test these. Um, and it's not an expensive thing either to, to find out what can get crazy is the remediation if you find it. But if somebody has mold in their body or their car in their house and they're trying to get well, but but they're detoxing and using, it sounds like we use a lot of the same things, binders and things to pull this mold out, but then they're going and sleeping right back in the environment or sitting in the environment. It's like putting fire and water, I'm sorry, gasoline and water on a fire you're trying to put out, right? Like it's not yeah. actually going to go out if you're also spraying it with, with gasoline. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. And people don't even know to look for these types of things for fatigue and brain fog and pain and fibro pain. They just, they just take oftentimes settle for, I have fibromyalgia. I have to live like this. I have chronic fatigue. I'm just going to have to, you know, learn to be the sick person in this yeah. world now. And, and there's what I counsel people on, there's always, always, always a cause. Your body just doesn't shut down and stop for no reason. It doesn't wake up on Tuesday and decide that it's going to stop making energy and the mitochondria is going to stop producing <laughs> ATP. Yeah, and it's generally a, a build up over a long period of time. And finally, yeah. you know, the load is just too big and, and things start to break. And yes, people, like you said, they don't look at where they could be getting exposed to it. So if you, if you think of drinking water and then living on a, a main road you know every time you open your window for fresh air 
you're letting in all these invisible particles that are going to sit on your bed and your sofa and your dining table. And all you're doing is you're, you know, you're sleeping, sitting and eating mm -hmm. in this stuff all the time. So you're going to pick it up. And then, you know, you go for a jog down the main road because it's outside your house, because why wouldn't I? And then, you know, whatever it is, you, this all this exposure, plus the quality of the foods that we eat now can be really, really uh, problematic and, totally. and, and the plastics and that kind of thing. Did a test on someone recently. Uh, actually, the, uh, the partner was worse, but, the, but him himself, seven different cancer causing uh, chemicals. It just, just on, on one test. And it's just like, no wonder one in two people get cancer nowadays. Right. right? And like you said, right? the world is really geared up to yeah. cause us problems. Yeah. And, and being aware yes. of that is so important. Speaking of Houston, again, I think there's a reason it's one of the top, they have one of the top cancer hospitals there, MD Anderson, hmm. and there's so many toxins and pollu pollutants in the air with all the oil refineries. Yeah. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that it was a supply and demand, right? There are so many cancer causing toxins people are breathing in every day that the cancer count was high, that that hospital developed out of necessity, necessity there. It's like I said, we've created this world now that we can't live in and, and what are we going to do? Yeah, what, what's worse, go live on an island. <laughs> yeah, what, what's worse is the, the hospital was either developed out of um, necessity or out of an opportunity. Well, and, that's a whole nother topic, yes. Right? And, and, and the opportunity was there to make a lot of money. Um, you know, if you go back to Erin Brockovich and what yeah. she did with hexavalent chromium, she wrote a great book, which, uh, which was Superman's Not Coming. And so basically you got to look after yourselves and you've got to be aware of this stuff. Yeah. And even now there's a lot of the same sort of problems with water pollution and yeah. you know, environmental pollution done knowingly, yeah. but nothing controlled because of cost and profit and, uh, and whatnot. And so, well, that's you know, near and dear to my heart because I grew up in Flint, Michigan. I left before the water crisis, but that's where I grew up. And it was not surprising to hear yeah. <laughs> what happened. Yeah. I still have extended family there. It, yeah. And they still it, can't drink the water. Yeah. Still cannot drink the water in Flint. And, and that's that is not even being talked about. Yeah. And this is 2022, right? The year right. 2022. And people still can't drink water that was polluted so many decades ago. And so, you know, what else has been done that we're not aware of? Right. That we're exposed right. to, right? And, and it's just the numbers. Just look at how many people are getting cancer, cardiovascular yeah. disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, all that kind of stuff. Look at how many people are getting so big weight wise. Yes. And that I haven't changed anything in my diet. I still train. I can't understand it. What's going on? You know, toxic load is going to cause you to hold a lot more body fat as yes. a protective mechanism and the cholesterol is going to go up and, 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 you know, so, so many things that I'm, I'm not even aware of it in most circumstances, you know, most doctors aren't even looking at it. And so one of the things that you like to get to is the very root cause of these things. Mm -hmm. What's your process for that? And, and how is it you, you, you find um, you have so much success with that? So it's really like playing detective in that initial consult and going through everything and just a lot of it's clinical experience of hearing this, hearing that, okay, we need to run this test. And a lot of it's really running the right tests and figuring out what's going on and it's putting the pieces of the puzzle together um, and taking the time, right? So to spend an hour with a new patient is unheard of in a traditional Western medicine, you know, appointment. Yeah, I mean, it's like 10 minutes, right? Come in, how are you? Right, what's wrong? Okay, thanks, here we go, bye. Here's the yeah. prescription. And Here's a prescription that matches that symptom. Yeah, and, and there's no lifestyle check. Oh, eat better. What do I have to eat? Oh, just-, just What eat does it. that mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> here, here's, a, here's a leaflet that tells you what our recommendations are. And it's mainly grain and, you know, it, it's interesting. If you want to fatten up an animal, you basically- Put it in a cage don't let it move very much and feed it a lot of grain right and and humans are the same or that's pump it full of hormones also right we've talked yeah. about plastics and not microwaving that's because it can produce estrogen like you know toxins so yeah and then they give them hormones absolutely there's hormones there's estrogen producing hormones in our in our skincare here yeah. that you know tightens skin that we're putting on our bodies every day and we don't even realize it and then of course we're eating those animals and that's 
transferring to us. But yeah, you're absolutely right. We're, yep, sitting in a cage and <laughs> eating grains. <laughs> yes, yeah. that'll and, do it. And you and, and we wonder why people are getting so big and heavy and, and whatnot. So for, from your perspective, what's the what's the kind of answer to, to a lot of people who just want to be able to say, look, I know there's a lot of things I need to be aware of. I know I've got to be careful. I just want to know what is a what's some good rules for running or living a, 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 a preventative life? In other words, how can I prevent some of this stuff happening to me? Yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of a lower inflammatory diet. So that would be taking things like refined sugar out, grains, um, processed foods, food dyes, preservatives. Those are, it feels basic, but it's, it's, it's not how we're eating for the most part, right? And in a simple way to look at that is shopping on the outside of the grocery store. So going down the the aisles is all going to be processed and chemical full of chemicals, right? So fruits, vegetables, protein, if it's not picked, killed or grown, don't eat it. You know, if it's processed, which is hard to do and it takes time and it takes commitment. Um, and that's a big one. I also think hydration is a big miss. We are drinking more and more sodas and coffees and really we need two to counterbalance caffeine, two glasses of water to one cup of whatever coffee that we're tea, whatever that we're doing to stay hydrated. So I think hydration is a, another big one. And I'm a big fan of doing a, an annual detox because again, the world is toxic. We have, we're living in a toxic environment. We can only take so much. I, I like to say it's like our, we have this bucket, right? And we can put toxins on it. We can put stress in it. We can put things that cause inflammation and eventually it's going to overflow and that's going to show up as disease and dysfunction in our body. So, you know, we change our oil filter in our car. Our liver is like our oil filter. We need to kind of take it out and rinse it once a year kind of thing and give it a new filter. And that's what a lot of detoxing can do. And if your gut is not in good shape, the detox is not going to go as well for you. So taking that a little deeper, I like to build you up before we break you down. So gut repair before a detox, I think once a year is worth everybody looking at. And then I'm talking this, this is a three to four week process total. You can do these things in, you can do it with whole foods. You can do it with herbs. You can do it by fasting there's juicing, there's a million different cleanses out there. And that's where I think working with the practitioner and finding out what's right for your genetics and your blood type and all of these things we take into account. But yeah, I think eating real whole food, hydration, and then detoxing is, is very high level stuff that everybody can look at doing right now. Yeah. I, I think the food thing is probably one of the most difficult because totally. going back to the belief behind it's okay to have those foods yeah you know, it's it's had this great advertising campaign and it's made to look a lovely color and the packaging's beautiful and you know everyone's eating yeah. it and everyone in the family eats it what's wrong with you you're being over over sensitive or you're, right. you know you're, you're overreacting to something it can't be that bad i think Actually, one of the biggest tricks we're seeing in the supermarket right now is things are being labeled gluten-free yeah like, like rice yeah of course it is or peanuts it was, right it was always gluten-free but yeah <laughs> And, and, you know, things like gluten-free bread. Well, what's the sugar count on that now? What's the sugar content in that? Because, you know, yes, if you have a gluten allergy, that is a good alternative, but are you picking a, a best, the best choice for that? Or can you get rid of bread altogether? Right. Because it's got to taste good. So they're putting high amounts of something in there to mm -hmm. make it taste good. So and gluten-free cookies, well, they're still cookies. You know, they're not healthy because they say gluten-free now. Yeah. They're still full of sugar. Yeah, I mean, so much of that. Firstly, there's yeast in gluten-free bread. Yeast can yeah. cause people a lot of issues anyway. Candida, yep. There's no, um, there's no fat in sugar. So right. you can have a lot of sugar in something and it'd be fat-free. <laughs> right? And it, but, but that's... the. As long That's as another you, marketing ploy, yeah. As long as you burn yeah. that sugar, it, you're fine. It's when you don't burn that sugar that it will convert to fat and get right. stored. But um, but there's a lot yeah. of them, you know, 98% fat free and all this kind of all this kind of stuff. A hundred percent. It is a trick, and we are suckered into it. <laughs> but but it, it's that it's that changing the cultural belief of it's okay uh, to eat this stuff because it's it's quick and it's easy and it tastes way yeah. better than broccoli. And, right. you know, I, I, all my generations of my family have used it. You know, yeah, but they're, they're all sick. They're all, they're, well, we all yeah. get diabetes. Come on, yeah. yeah. Because you're all eating the same stuff, right? And, yeah. and it's not the fault of those people because they've trusted what they've been told from a marketing perspective. So therefore their belief is it's okay. And therefore we'll do that. And 
This is what's causing us major, major health issues around the world at the moment, I think. Well, um, and this is why you're doing what you're doing and putting the message out there and yeah. I'm doing what I'm doing because we know that it doesn't have to be that way. And we, we want, obviously we want a successful practice, but what we really want is people making these changes before they hit rock bottom and they come to people like us yeah. where they can't get out of bed, right? Like that's, that's what we really want. That's the message we want to spread is you can make these changes before you get diet, you know, diagnosed with a disease. That's really a set of symptoms. And we have to un unravel and reverse all that. And, and sometimes it's too late. Sometimes we can't get people totally back to hundred percent well, because it's been 40 years of, of illness and toxins and things that we just may not get through, but yes, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly it. This can all be changed, but getting, getting the education out there in a different way is not, we're fighting it. We're going against main media, right? Like we're going uphill against yeah. all this yeah. stuff. Uh, it, it, the, the thing is we have to, be able to get people to question what they currently believe. Yes. That's it. All you've got to do is just question it. If I'm feeling so bad, yeah. me, is it possible that some of the stuff I believe isn't quite right? And if you just have that as a crack in the door to say, well, maybe it is, let's have a think what alternatives there are. It's a lot easier for people to change their, their mm -hmm. beliefs and their minds around things. And, That's a and, bold statement that can that can fit for so many scenarios right now in the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, uh on the on our, my last podcast um do you know udo's oil yeah yeah mm -hmm. so udo's aramis uh, erasmus sorry um did two episodes with me just now and one of them is very interesting guy really really quite impressive 80 years old and sharp as a as a tack and one of the things he says was you know violence never comes in a time of peace mm. but real peace and, and peace doesn't mean there's no war. It just means um, peace means there's actual peace in people. And it's a very difficult thing to do. And like you said, right now, we've got all sorts of shenanigans going on in Eastern Europe and people are fighting and doing all sorts of weird, wonderful things and just getting people to come back to being just focusing on themselves and the peace and the, and the kind of amazement that life can give and being, a, being able to recognize that stuff, that's almost impossible for a lot of people because they're so focused on the bad things that are going on to them, how they feel, how they're tired, yes. how they're this or that. And, you know, decades later, they go, oh, well, I missed my whole life because I was worried about the pain I had in my back or, you know, yeah. whatever it was, and I never got the help I needed. So, Imagine so if we all did that. We all went internal that way and really yeah. focused on, healing and being the best versions of ourselves we'd be we're able to be a lot different place yeah and and i wonder um why it's so difficult for people to buy into that it's the million you know, dollar question what's the influence that's being given to them yeah by outside uh marketing people who have a vested interest in the profit to stop people thinking like that not just in the medical world, but, you know, in the food and the and industry and buy my plastic goods and buy my this and that and the other, you know, that stuff is really compelling. How, you know, how am I going to have this amazing life if I don't own those, those shoes or, those, or, or that bag or that car or whatever it is. And, um, and that's the problem we have, I think, but it's just so stacked against us for profit. Yes. We need to just get back to basics. Yeah. Basic food basic life yes but none of that is sexy <laughs> well that's true <laughs> right? Where, where, where right? Is, where's the hook where's the thing that makes me sell the book or you know where's the know, dopamine hit yeah right I, I must be a special source somewhere or what's the tricky thing that i need to do that i can be that's going to fix all this stuff and it's just like well yeah back to basics and i'm like mm, yep not sure yeah i'm gonna buy into that one <laughs> yes absolutely so <laughs> um, I, I think you know we, we we definitely agree on a lot of a lot of things and, and and you're right getting this message out is massively important if people want to find out more about you and your work where is the best place for them to go yeah our handle is mine is dr tanisha wards t-e-n-e-s-h-a-w-a-r-d-s or infinity wellness atex so infinity wellness austin texas atex is a abbreviation for that and um it's on all our handles yep Brilliant. and i'll put that in the show notes people can click straight on it and Thank go you um i know you've got instagram because i follow that and um 
you know, there's a lot of great stuff that people need to be made aware of. Um, yes. The, uh, the important thing is to take that first step into, is there a better option? Mm-hmm. Because prevention is so much easier than cure. You know, if we can, if we can yes. prevent things, we, it makes our life a lot easier. Our job is way easier if we get right. people, like you said, before they turn up and say, yeah, I've had this for 40 years and everything stopped. Everything's failing. And that's a mind shift change yeah. right prevention yeah because we're sold the cure right look at the commercials and the pharmaceutical companies on every single channel right but yes if we can get if we can touch people ahead of that yeah. the world will be a better place everybody Absolutely. would be definitely healthier brain chemistry would be balanced maybe we wouldn't be into these some of these situations if people's brains were balanced yeah and and, and, going and, and running out into the uh, um into the fields while being sprayed and and playing in it that kind of stuff is uh something to be uh, uh, spoken about i think but listen thanks so much for coming on today having a chat um i'm sure there's so much more that we could discuss and maybe at some point in the future we can dig into some of this, these things uh, in more detail but for now uh, much appreciated i think everyone should go and check out the website check out the, the instagram and um you know reach out to you if they want to know more about heavy metals and that kind of stuff that you're dealing with because there is definitely a huge amount of people that need that help so again thank you so much and um, and i'm looking forward to speaking again and thanks for what you do keep fighting the good fight always thanks bye Mm -hmm.